Uh, let's welcome in uh, our first guest on the show, Vijay Chopra, MD and uh, CEO at uh, Inoch Ventures Private Limited is now joining us. Uh, Vijay, good morning. First, let's start with uh, your top picks. Uh, uh, what, what would you buy in such a market? Well, I think that there are still buying, buying opportunities in the market and uh, they would be stock specific action, although maybe the index seems to be going nowhere and, you know, it would be, uh, you know, primarily uh, trading in a very tight range. Uh, but I think that um, there are a few stocks which can do well. Uh, my first call would be uh, BHEL. Uh, the stock has shown some resilience and come back from 171 odd levels. Uh, closed yesterday at about 175. Uh, whatever calls I'm giving today are all short term calls. Um, and I think that, you know, it can raise up to 190 if somebody holds with a short-term perspective. Uh, and a stop loss of 165 is recommended on the stock. My second call would be India Bulls Real Estate. Uh, again, it has been, uh, uh, it has had a fantastic run. And yesterday also, uh, it showed a lot of resilience. Uh, the stock closed at 171 rupees yesterday. It could be bought for a target of 190 and a stop loss of 160 is recommended on the stock. Uh, my final call would be Asian Paints. Uh, with the fall in crude prices, um, uh, they, it is a great benefit for all the paint companies. And the Asian Paints, uh, being the leader, uh, should benefit. And I think that um, it, it, it should go up. Uh, the stock closed at um, 1171 rupees yesterday. It could be bought for a target of 1230. And the stop loss of 1150 1, is uh, strictly recommended on the stock. All right. Uh, we also are now joined uh, by Samit Chavan. He's a, a technical analyst with Angel Broking. Uh, Samit, good morning. What are your top picks? Good morning. Uh, we like uh, Dish TV. Uh, the stock had already given decent price volume breakout uh, during last month. However, due to lack of buying interest, uh, we witnessed some corrective move towards its breakout point, and its stock has now been uh, consolidating around its strong support of 95-96 since last couple of weeks. Uh, yesterday we saw good positive traction in this counter, volume activity was quite good. So we expect this stock to resume its uptrend. Uh, we expect this stock to move towards 106, uh, which would be a near-term target. Stop loss now can be placed around 91 rupees. Uh, second buy would be on Voltas. Uh, uh, on Thursday, this stock gave a decent price volume breakout uh, from its uh, multiple resistance zone on a closing basis. Uh, on Friday, we witnessed some pullback rally. Now, uh, if you look at the overall broader degree chart structure, it's quite encouraging. And we expect this stock to gradually move towards 440, 445, which would be a near-term target. So it can be bought on any dip. Uh, one can now keep a strict stop loss uh, around 409. And our third buy call would be on m and uh, Clearly, this stock is on a roll since last uh, one, one and a half month. Charge structure certainly looks good. And from current level, we expect decent up in the stock. So our immediate target would be around 1400, 1430 for m and So one can buy with a strict stop loss around 1290 on a closing basis. Right. Uh, one stock that will be in focus will be Aurobindo Pharma. Uh, so they had their unit for inspection. The inspection started on April 20th. That is something that we reported and ended on April 20th. And now uh, the US FDA has gone ahead on their website and uploaded uh, what, what essentially was the takeaway of that inspection. Now it was a uh, unit four inspection at uh, Aurobindo Pharma, which is uh, in Hyderabad. They have their, all, the, all the seven units are in Hyderabad. Uh, why unit uh, four is important is because they have a lot of pending approvals, about 30 five approvals. So US FDA last night about 8 p.m. India time has released the detailed Form 483 on Hyderabad's Unit 4 for Orbindo Pharma. There are seven observations. This is something which was uh, already going in the market that, you know, six to seven observations have been issued. Now, I looked at the details observations. Most of the observations are regarding inadequate maintenance of uh, different infrastructure within various processes. Uh, none of the observations are pointing out towards any data integrity uh, issue. Uh, so observations lack any data integrity concerns, which always is something uh, that, uh, you know, market, market participants tend to look at. However, However, uh, they, uh, they, they are, you know, uh, between, uh, you know, one would say good observations versus uh, the worst observations. So they are in between. Now, why is this uh, important is because 25% of total pending approvals are from Unit 4. In terms of numbers, as somebody is tracking, 35 pending approvals and some of them are key high margin drugs. That's why it's important. Now, a lot of brokerages have written about it. 
Medellin says that they expect approvals uh, to get delayed by about two to three months from Unit 4, but they expect Orbindo to bounce back or go ahead and solve these procedures uh, quite fast. Credit Suisse says approvals should not be delayed from Unit 4. They have a buy rating. They continue to maintain uh, that particular level. So uh, according to them, it should not be delayed. Jeffrey says don't expect an escalation to warning letter, but at the same time, uh, out of the seven observations, one or two observations are uh, something which will take time to resolve. So in the meantime, whether approvals come Come in or not, that is something to watch out for. The pre-open session is on. Uh, the pre-open session price is on your screen. Two rupees higher, six zero seven. Uh, it's a stock which has not done particularly well going into these observations. All right, uh, Samit, uh, how do you view stocks like Orbindo, Dr. Reddy's, and Lupin? They are trading at fifty-two week lows when the markets are at new highs. They're not falling anymore. Does it mean that they're getting support? Or would you stay away from stocks that look weak and rather go with the winners? We would certainly stay away from such kind of stocks. In fact, we have not been so active uh, since last three, four months in the entire pharmaceutical space. Uh, if we talk about Toro in the pharma, this stock has been underperforming since last three, four months uh, and has given a decent uh, correction from higher levels of 780, 800. So if you look at the broader degree chart structure, it's still negative and we expect, you know, slowly and gradually uh, or in the pharma to slide towards 560, 550 where, you know, it's weekly 200 SMA is played. So, uh, as far as uh, you know, levels are concerned, we expect uh, the stock to continue this uh, downward rally at least towards, uh, say, 560, 550. And on the upside, uh, now 620 to 640 would act as a very strong resistance. And we have been advising our clients to, you know, b book out your uh, losses once uh, this particular stock gives a decent bounce back towards 620, 640. So that would be a good uh, opportunity to exit your longs. As far as levels for looping is concerned, clearly this stock is also... Uh, you know, underperforming since last three, four months and has given a decent uh, correction from the levels of 40, 50, 1500. So if we talk about, uh, you know, levels uh, in the downward direction, then 1200, 1180, these are the next level to watch out for. So probably that would act as a very strong support, but we would expect uh, the stock to continue this uh, uh, downward momentum. And uh, on the upside, any bounce towards 1350, 1380 would be a good exit opportunity. All right. Uh, Vijay Samit on, is not sounding very positive on pharmaceutical stocks uh, on the charts. But fundamentally, the valuations have corrected quite a bit. Um, and, you know, uh, you, people say that if you pick the right pharma stock, you may still uh, make good money. Do you believe that? Or do you think that uh, the entire pharma story is over? Uh, the returns that they gave previously will not be re uh, repeated in the future? Well, it would be an overstatement to say pharma story is over, but uh, we have to understand what is bothering the uh, the entire sector. Uh, number one, exports. Uh, the exports to United States specifically, you know, there are various statements which come every day, uh, you know, uh, which bother the entire uh, pharma space. Number two, uh, the rupee has uh, actually strengthened, which has, um, uh, you know, actually um, uh, hit the balance sheets. Number three, uh, when the government of India is talking about, you know, uh, doctors writing generic names and, you know, the maybe it's an end of a era where, you know, brands uh, which were huge with all these companies, uh, they they take they took the center stage. But now, you know, if it, if it all trickles down to generics, it's going to be a big problem for companies because the earnings would, uh, would be hit considerably. Uh, so when there are so many black clouds um, all around, and uh, you know there is a possibility that you know the earnings might grow might not grow at that pace which uh, they used to uh, i would prefer that you know one should stay away from the sector as of now you know uh, i'm sure that they are going to reinvent their strategies and going to come back strongly because after all it's a consumption story and uh, uh, i would also recommend you know when the us fda is coming very harshly on all the uh, indian companies to maintain their global standards of manufacturing uh, and you know some of the companies have actually taken the brunt so my sense is that you know it's better to stay away and uh, be into other stories other sectors which can uh, give a better return on the buck so while there are opportunities avail in, available in the market although pharma being a defensive play but I would still recommend that, you know, better to be in FMCG right now than in Palma. 
Right. Uh, you know, talking about consumption, telecom is also one space that people look at in the consumption pack. And we had Bharti Infratel uh, declaring numbers. Bharti Airtel, which is a parent of Bharti Infratel, will declare uh, today. So let's look at Bharti Infratel and what they have done. Absolutely inline set of numbers. One would say that, you know, there was a slight bit of negative bias, but overall, the numbers were broadly in line. Sales numbers, 3,520 crores. This is the top line that I'm talking about. The PAT number, and we've done the comparison on a QOQ basis because it's a telecom company. But particularly, for Infratel, some people also look at it on a YOY basis, uh, but uh, most of the people look at it on a QOQ basis. Three and a half percent higher on a QOQ basis in terms of revenue, profits declined by about four odd percent. If you look at the EBITDA number, 1448, that's the EBITDA number versus about 1406. So that's a QOQ comparison, it's broadly in line in terms of EBITDA. Uh, the profitability was a slight bit of miss. Why was it a miss? Is because there was the lower, uh, the other income uh, was slightly lower, and that led to a miss on the profit front. Overall, margins were strong at about 45 odd percent. Gross tenancy ratio stood pretty strong at about 2.3. In fact, it's the third straight quarter where this tenancy ratio is looking positive. It's an important number for Bharti Infratel. The gross tenancy addition in terms of an absolute amount was about 7,061 crores, uh, 7,061 units. 7,100 is what the street was estimating. So by most of the means, the numbers were looking in line. Uh, that will be a stock in focus. The pre-open session uh, prices at the bottom of your screen down about 2 odd percent. Bharti Airtel will declare numbers today. Most likely, the numbers should come out post-market hours, but uh, you know this will be an interesting set of numbers. Uh, Bharti Airtel, uh, what happens to that? Now, we are looking at three different numbers when we talk about Bharti Airtel. We look at the consolidated numbers. We look at the India numbers, where Geo will have an impact again on this quarter. And you look at the Africa numbers, where there is a lot of uh, you know uh, st uh, uh, instability because of the currency movement that is happening. So these are consolidated numbers, 22,572 crores. The profit number at about 542 crores. So 3% decline on the revenue. Again, these are quarter on quarter. Profit numbers are expected to go down 14%. EBITDA margins or EBITDA for the company continues to be very healthy. 8,000 crores plus in terms of EBITDA and 35%. By far one of the best as far as the entire uh, telecom space is concerned. It's a sector leading uh, margin company and that, uh, that is something which the markets continue to expect. Now you come down and break this business into two parts. You look at India business, you look at Africa business. India one will be very interesting. So firstly, second straight quarter of Geo having an entire impact. In fact, their base size was much bigger in this quarter and that's why the impact could also be slightly on the larger side. These are sales numbers, 13,519 crore. That's a decline expected on a QOQ basis. At the EBITDA front, the hit will be higher because, you know, some of the players like Idea, Bharti, both of you know, they followed them. Not, not exactly at the same magnitude, but uh, discounts were increased. Uh, you know, freebies were increased and that will have an impact on RPM. That will have an impact on the data volumes. Remember, Reliance at this point of time was giving free data. So it will have an impact on data volume growth, which is expected to go down 17%. Data Average revenue per user will go down by to about 165, and that, and as we told you, it will be a full impact of Reliance Geo that uh, Bharti will see. In terms of their Africa business, what you are looking at, so 1,259 crores. That's the EBITDA that they are likely to do. But again, you know, this could vary because of uh, you know uh, the sort of currency movements that are that is expected uh, on Bharti. Uh, Okay, so about 30 seconds remaining for markets to close. So the entire telecom space uh, will be in focus. If you look at Idea, it went up 6% yesterday. Bharti also went up yesterday. So maybe ahead of numbers, the market is saying that the impact may not be as high, but uh, that's only something which we'll come to know post-market hours uh, uh, today. When Bharti will declare numbers, tomorrow 2.30 is when they have the con call. So that time you'll get a view as to what they expect of the Vodafone Idea merger, what they expect going ahead of uh, the pricing competition, especially after April, what they have seen. Uh, once Geo has started to charge. Uh, we should get uh, the prices coming anytime soon now. A lot of stocks in the telecom space will be in focus. Banking companies like Union Bank, Canada Bank will be in focus. Union declared post-market hours. Canada Bank, of course, declared yesterday, but management commentary came in only post-market hours. So all these stocks uh, uh, will be in focus. These are first trades for you. 16 points higher, 18 points higher now, 9,332. 9,335 is the level to watch out for, considering that there could be a 3-4 point error. We are broadly around the first resistance in 
in the opening mark. But let's see whether we sustain this level or not. Bank of Baroda absolutely flat. Ambuja Cement was the stock of the uh, day yesterday, down about one rupee right now. Tata Steel absolutely flat. HDFC Limited, twenty thousand shares traded. Decent volumes, not very high, but good volumes with a thirteen to fourteen rupee higher move. No news flow that I can see, except the fact that SBI has cut rates for her housing loan, which would actually, uh, you know, increase the competition uh, for HDFC as well. Axis Bank two rupees higher, BPCL one rupee higher, Bharti Infratel reacting to numbers but really no change. Adani Port slightly on the negative side, Z Entertainment about two rupees lower, HCL Tech down up, sorry close to three rupees or so, Indusin Bank up about one to two rupees. Asian Paints uh, prob probably is cheering because of crude oil prices going down in the last few days, eight rupees high, eight rupees higher. India Bull Housing Finance has had a phenomenal run. Today, 59,000 shares traded and uh, slightly on the negative side. Kotak Bank around the 908 since the results had been, it's been at that level. Lupin did react positively yesterday uh, towards the second half, uh, but it's absolutely flat right now. LNT is up about a rupee or so and Sun Pharma is down close to 2 rupees. Power Grid 1 rupee higher, NTPC point about 25 paisa higher, HDFC Bank 2 rupees higher, 1,537, HUL down about a rupee or so. Tata Power 0.15 paisa down, 82, 83 for Tata Power. Maruti 10 rupees higher, 6640, 5000 shares traded. Grasim about 3 rupees higher and MM flat with a negative bias. Dr. Reddy's really no change, really no volumes. Aisha Motors did exceptionally well yesterday, but it was reacting to numbers, the guidance that they had given. So 29 rupees lower. That's Orbindo Pharma for you. Uh, absolutely flat. Uh, no change. It's reacting to the Form 483. As I told you, you know, the Form 483, the observations over there, they are not materially worse. They are not materially good. That's why, you know, really, I think the markets is trying to decide as to which way the stock will go. Bharti Infratel, one rupee lower, 363, 364, one and a half lakh shares traded, but that's because of results. That's because of numbers. ABB India reacting to numbers, one and a half percent higher, 1,428, 29, but only 8,000 shares traded. So clearly, no move. Union Bank, 1 million shares uh, traded, 1 to 2 rupees down. So again, really no impact, uh, you know, that you're seeing for Union Bank as well. 186, 187 for Union Bank. JSW Energy, 2 rupees higher. It's a volume uh, buzzer right now to 2.6 million shares traded. That's that's some volume even for JSW Energy. I'm not sure if a block deal has gone through because uh, that's quite significant. It may not be significant in terms of the total amount of that block deal, but I think it's a decent amount of uh, volumes to go with. Uh, four and a half lakh shares traded for Canada Bank, 386, 387. When results came yesterday, the stock went to as high as 405. And right now it's at 387. So it's almost down about 20 rupees from the high that it hit before the management started to speak. That's ABB India, 2% 2, 2 higher. Ajanta Pharma, you know, Pharma as a sector has seen continuous selling. And that's reflected uh, in Ajanta. Uh, pharma as well. Real estate stocks, uh, they were all buzzing yesterday. Let's see what's happening on them today. So that's Anant Raj for you. It's up around 5 odd percent. That's doing well. KNR Construction is up 4 percent. DLF has hit the 200 mark. So I think that's an important level. It's an important psychological level. From, just from our technical guest, we'll get the levels uh, to watch out in DLF and some of these real estate names in just a bit. So that's HDIL for you. Let's look at India Bull uh, Real Estate as well. That's up around a percent or so. So all these real estate stocks are probably the play to be or that's something which the market is now betting on. That's DLF, one and a half million shares. But it's always a great volume traded counter. So there's no problem of volumes uh, for DLF. India Bull Real Estate is up close to about 1.2, 1.3 uh, odd percent. So that's a name which is doing uh, uh, well. Anisha, any other names that uh, you can pick up from the mid cap, large cap space? Uh, Pankaj, on volumes, uh, some of the uh, mid-cap uh, uh, real estate stocks like Anantraj and Ansel API have moved up well. Even HDL and Unitech are doing well. Uh, Chambal Fertilizers is again seeing some action. So is uh, Fortis Healthcare. Both these stocks have moved up on high volumes. And in the uh, mid-tier PSU uh, bank names, while Vijaya Bank is up, uh, you mentioned Canada Bank and Union Bank are down. So uh, these are the uh, movers when it comes uh, to uh, the volume. Some mid-tier steel companies like Monet Espath, Electro Steel, uh, they're also buzzing on high volumes today. And uh, Bhushan Steel also up 3.5%. So these are some of the stocks to watch. Uh, though the market is completely flattened out and the currency also took quite a turn a day earlier today, uh, closer to 64.5%. So, uh, we're down about a third percent on the currency as well uh, so this is what we're watching out for and um, let's go back to our guests who are joining us and are there to talk to us about uh, stocks uh, Samit, uh, what do you see on the charts for bharti airtel is due to come out with its earnings today 
See clearly after seeing a strong move, uh, you know, from the levels of uh, 290, 300 uh, in the month of Jan, mid Jan, uh, the stock has slipped into a consolidation mode, and since last couple of months, the stock has done nothing. Uh, the positive thing is the stock has been consolidating around a strong support, which is around 340, 338. Uh, so going ahead, we would uh, closely watch its uh, price movement. 360 seems to be a major hurdle on the upside. So we would, uh, you know, uh, turn with a positive bias only once this stock you know manages to surpass 360 with the rising volumes until then we expect this stock to consolidate as of now we see a range of 360 360 on the higher side would act as a resistance and low side we see buying coming in uh, in this particular stock around 340 342 so basically this stock has slipped into a consolidation mode and we see a trading range of at least 15 20 points Okay, let's welcome in Ashish Chaturmota as well. He's with Sanctum Wealth Management. Uh, Ashish, good morning. Uh, the markets are still firm at this point of time. What are your top picks for the day? So I think uh, reality as a space is looking very interesting and within that uh, DLF is one stock as uh, Pankaj was mentioning has crossed a very important psychological uh, resistance zone of 200 mark. We have observed a very strong open interest in last couple of uh, uh, trading sessions in the stock. So I believe that this stock has a potential to test 220-222 which is another 10% upside from current levels. Uh, one can initiate a long position at current levels keeping a stop below 197 and upside can look for a target of 222 levels. Uh, my other pick would be be a long call on um, uh, on the fertilizer names and I think within that space R uh, RCF is looking uh, very very interesting stock has crossed a multiple resistance zone of uh, uh, 90 mark and I think this stock has a potential to cross uh, 98 99 levels in a very short term so one can initiate a long position in RCF at current levels keeping a stop below 86 and Coromandel International is uh, trading at an all time high so that stock has crossed its all time high after a strong consolidation of last uh, uh, two years. So I think this stock has a potential to test 440, 450 levels in uh, next one, two months. So one can expect another 10 to 15 percent upside in Coromandel International from current levels. Uh, keep a stop below 385 and can look for a target of 450 levels. All right. Uh, so picks coming in from real estate, from ke chemicals, from uh, fertilizer space. Uh, so uh, those were Ashish's top picks. Um, uh, Vijay, do you have a view on Fortis? Fortis Healthcare has some buzz surrounding about its take sale from the promoters as well. Uh, they, in the healthcare space, that has done very well. Uh, do you think this is good for more? Well, I think yes. Uh, you know, uh, this news has been around for quite some time, and you know, the stock also has been uh, uh, introduced in the in the FNO. Uh, my sense is that you know the stock can move up to 240, 235, uh, 240 odd levels, and um, probably you know we're going to see a, a decent upside in, in in this stock as well. So the stock has been consolidating nicely around say 160 to 170, 180 odd levels, and I think that uh, you know this can quickly move up to uh, 240 odd levels. Right. Uh, Vijay, you know, you spoke about the pharma pack and how you would want to be into consumer versus pharma. Uh, but don't you think that a lot of these pharma companies after the recent underperformance are really getting into a value zone? So if you're looking for a two to three year perspective, the entire sector can give good returns? Well, I would wait. Um, you know, as I said earlier, that if there are black clouds around any sector, uh, Anisha was saying that, you know, pharma story is over. I said, no, it is not. But, you know, as of now, uh, if there are so many issues around uh, uh, around the pharma space, so why do get into this space uh, at the first place? So you know, if at all this thing happens that you know the government of India implements uh, the uh, the generic uh, law, so you know there would be a big dent uh, on the balance sheets of all the pharma companies. So you know there are brands which are worth maybe 500 crores, 400 crores, and there are large brands these uh, top companies sell. Uh, so what will happen to those brands and if, if at all, you know, only generics would be written. So there is a lot of hoo hoopla around this uh, news. So better to wait and uh, there's no point jumping into the bandwagon and uh, probably we could, we, we could get better opportunities elsewhere as of now. Uh, but yes, maybe, you know, we can see pharma companies coming down another 10-15% and that, uh, you know, let, let's wait for uh, that to happen and um, then probably we can decide. Right. Uh, Ashish, uh, in terms of sectors and themes, you mentioned about real estate. Uh, you know, what are the other themes that you like? What are the other stocks that you like in the mid-cap space? 
So I like see if if you look at the entire construction space, it is looking very very interesting. We we discussed about uh, NCC last time at around 85 bucks. We recommended this stock. It has hit a target of 900 levels. But I think this stock has the potential to give another 20 25 percent upside uh, from current levels. So I think after a good consolidation, now NCC is one stock which looks very interesting to me. Uh, one can initiate a long at current levels, keeping a stop below 94, and an upside can look for a target of 120 levels. Uh, even if you look at you know the entire power uh, power sector related stock. Like we discussed about REC, uh, we recommended the stock around 140 odd levels, and the, now now the stock has crossed this 210 mark. I think on the same line, PFC looks very very interesting. Uh, this stock has consolidated uh, very well between a range of 145 to uh, 160 165 zone. Now I think this stock has a potential to to cross 190 200 mark in days to come. So I think PFC looks very interesting in terms of positional uh, idea. One can initiate a long uh, in PFC at current levels, keep a stop around 157 158. Levels and I think this stock has a potential to give another 15 to 18 percent upside from current levels. Right, you had spoken about REC as well. Does that also be positive, or now it's PFC versus REC and PFC is looking better? No, no, definitely REC is still looking uh, interesting, and I think this stock has also potential to you know uh, test 245, 250 zone. Uh, but as a fresh trade idea, since you know PFC has underperformed REC uh, significantly, so I think that uh, that catch up rally might uh, uh, play in, in in PFC for some time. But definitely REC still looks uh, interesting. Even in the, within that space, I think Power Grid is one stock which is continuously consolidating near this 200 to 210 mark. But I think this stock has a potential to test 230 to 240 zone. So I think another 15 percent possible in in Power Grid. So I think the entire basket REC, PFC, and Power Grid looks very interesting. Right, uh, Vijay, what will be your call on REC, PFC? Now these are names that have done very well. Uh, would you still believe there is upside from your own? well all the power trading companies you know i've been fairly bullish uh, on these companies and i think that you know if at all uh, you know the rural electrification has to happen the electricity has to reach each and every um, you know village of the country uh, rec would be in in business and you know they are also uh, you know looking good on the charts so i think that you know rec pfc these companies should do good and we can see another 15 to 20% upside uh, even from here right uh, but what about the overall nbfc space would you compare them with the overall nbfc space because nbfcs did well in the last two years but not these names now in the last six months when nbfcs are flat these names have started to go up well you know uh, there is sector rotation and uh, we will see uh, you know uh, different sectors working at some point of time nbfcs did well they are doing reasonably okay as of now but i think that you know power trading companies Uh, should do uh, do well. There are a lot of reforms which are happening in the power space, and I'm sure that you know uh, this government has the agenda. Um, you know, even even states like UP, the uh, the chief minister has categorically come out and said that it's going to be a uh, you know a zero uh, shortage um, state. There used to be huge shortages in in in, in states like UP. So if at all this has to be. um achieved so all the power trading companies would be in business as i said earlier so i like these names wherever you know uh, we see uh, you know rdc pfc uh, the power finance companies and the power trading companies ptc uh, these companies should do well with with short medium term uh, perspective right uh, ashish uh, could you just give us your view on icici <laughs> bank now that's a stock which has done well uh, has it uh, has has it given a breakout Uh, do you think that it can it can go up uh, further from here on Uh, yeah definitely see if you look at you know icici bank it has underperformed uh, the entire you know ba- banking basket and after a long time this uh, this breakout has happened with a very strong volume now i think yeah there can be some profit booking which can which can come till the, which can bring the stock towards 295 294 zone but eventually now the stock is in a clear breakout zone and i think this stock has a potential to test 340 uh, 348 kind of levels in days to come so i think any dip towards 298 uh, would would be an opportunity to go long in the stock i think on downside 288 290 A positional uh, strong support for the stock until it doesn't breaks 288 uh, on downside. I think uh, any dip towards 298 295 is a good opportunity to go long. Right. Just a word on Interglobe Aviation. They declare numbers today as well. Uh, looks very very interesting. So I, as you remember, we have been recommending this stock called SpiceJet around 74 odd levels, and I think the entire aviation space is looking very interesting. Within that, Indigo is one stock which is consolidating well, and I think the kind of delivery volumes we are uh, seeing in the stock, this stock has a potential to test 1280, 1290 uh, in 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 a short span of time. But I think looking into a broader pattern, this stock has a potential to cross its all-time high, and I think I will not be surprised to see this stock crossing 1450, 1500 mark in next. 
next one year. So I think looks very interesting at current levels. On downside, 1070 should be kept as a, a positional stop loss and one can initiate a long position. All right, uh, Interglobe, uh, the one that has a brand Indigo, is going to come out with its earnings today. Let's quickly take it through a preview. We expect sales to be higher by about 800 crores, so top line growth about 20%. But we see the uh, bottom line pressure, the profits could be down by 50%, uh, closer to 270 crore rupees. EBITDA is uh, uh, also seen lower at 1,083 crore rupees, mainly because of uh, the ATF prices uh, crude uh, from the base of last year is higher and that will eat uh, into their uh, bottom line. Uh, when it comes to Godrej consumer, it's also going to come out with its fourth quarter earnings. Sales are seen higher at 2,494 crore rupees, growth about 10 percent and we see profit growth about 14 percent at 353 crore rupees. EBITDA is also seen higher at 511 crore rupees, EBITDA margin seed uh, flat at about 28.5 percent. And uh, the trades in international business to be weak, the currency has also been volatile. So we'll keep a watch out of uh, all this when the earnings come out. Vijay, the consumer names, uh, uh, what are your picks? You know, stocks like uh, Havel, Svolta, Settles, see, there's any gravity for these stocks. They're correct that they go up. Uh, do you have a pick from the consumer space? Well, I think uh, CG uh, Power, Compton Greaves, um, Compton Greaves Consumer and Hevels are my top picks. Uh, I like both these companies and I think that uh, there could be an upside of uh, 10 to 15 percent in both these stocks. Hevels, you know, over a period of years has developed a fantastic distribution channel, fantastic product line and um, uh, and they are market leaders in some of the segments. So, you know, my sense is that Havels should uh, you know, keep on doing good quarter on quarter. They have been posting good results and their international acquisitions and international sales are also picking up uh, very smartly. So my sense is that, you know, uh, these two companies should do well. Right. Uh, Sameet, what do you do with some of the metal names uh, like Hidalgo and Vedanta that have fallen quite significantly? Uh, they seem to be stabilizing now. Do you think uh, they can make a good trading bet for the short term? See, clearly, uh, in last uh, couple of weeks, uh, we have witnessed a decent profit booking from higher levels. This space has done well over the past uh, you know, 12 to 13 months uh, since February 2016 lows. Uh, if we talk about Indalco, this stock is in a consolidation more wherein, you know, 200, 205 has become a very steep hurdle. And on the low side, we see a strong support coming at around 180, 170. And this stock has now corrected around its strong support. So we would expect some bounce back rally, but if we have to pick any stock uh, from the uh, metal space, then we would uh, go f with uh, Tata Steel. This stock has uh, corrected uh, quite sharply from higher levels and it is now approaching its 200 day moving average, which is placed around 425, 426. So this seems to be a very good uh, uh, bet, uh, at least in the near term, considering its risk to reward ratio. So one can you know, uh, buy this stock around 430, 432, that would be a good buying opportunity. And we expect a decent bounce back rally towards 458, 460. So if we have to pick any you know particular stock from metal space, then we would go with Tata still. Uh, one can buy with a stop loss of 420 and we expect a decent bounce back rally towards 458, 460. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, gentlemen, for joining us on ADTV Profit and giving us all your picks. Uh, please uh, leave us with your disclosures. Samit, your disclosures. I don't have any personal holding in discuss stocks, uh, but yes, our clients might be having positions. Vijay, your disclosures? No personal holdings. Our customers might be having, uh, you know, the stocks which we have talked about today. All right. Thank you so much for being with us on NDTV Profit.